stay obedient to the gift. Stay obedient to the gift. I remember starting out and trying to figure out my journey. I'm back in Sacramento. I'm about to deliver a keynote. I'm excited as ever. Right before I walk into the amphitheater, a woman comes up to me and she says, hey, like, I know a presentation is going on. Do you know, am I in the right place? She asks me and I'm like, oh, yeah, it's, it's right over there. A little bit later, she checks her, the, the, uh, the pamphlet and she looks back and she's like, oh my God, you're the speaker. I'm so sorry. I'm like, don't even worry about it, right? I'm excited. And I go in, I'm, I'm getting ready to deliver. I'm looking out into the, into the audience and there's probably seven people in the audience, right? Two of which are family members, right? One is my mom. So I go out and even though there weren't that many people there, I give it my all. I'm focused because I know, I know that I could put energy in this thing. Something's on me. And after I finish, I remember we're doing Q&A and my mom raises her hand and she's looking at me and she says, when did you start speaking so much? Like, tell us about how you started and, and where this came from. And it was a funny question, but I think about it because the man that she saw speaking, she was not familiar with. This is a woman who has known me my entire life. In many ways, she knew me before I knew myself. And her question was, who is that? Where did he come from? And it got me thinking about purpose. It got me thinking about your gift. It got me thinking about your calling. When you are called to, to walk in a particular journey, there's oftentimes going to come where the person that you become is unfamiliar to the person that you once knew. The way in which you walk will be different than what you were before. And so when she was looking at me, she was honestly and truly asking, who is that? And to be honest, I had no answers for her. But now that I think back on it, I, I, I'm, I'm reflecting and I'm realizing that when people are called and they walk in their journey with confidence and with purpose, clarity and direction, it will call upon you something that you didn't even know existed within yourself. Like when you actually start to operate within your gift and in your calling, do not be scared. Do not be fearful. Do not be surprised when you start operating in ways that you didn't even know you could operate. Be obedient to the gift. It doesn't mean that the person that you are now will be the same as the person that is called to do the work that you've been called to do. I remember finishing that talk. And the woman who came, one of the seven, she was walking our way and she didn't come to me first. She beelined directly to my mother and gave her a hug and tears. Now she let her know that the message that I shared was for her that day. I remember that moment like, like crystal clear because it was a reflection. It was almost a mirror showing me that when I walk in the calling that I am supposed to, it doesn't matter if there are seven people or 700, 7,000 even. What comes through you is going to be for someone directly. And so that's why you have to be obedient to the gift. Fast forward a couple of years later, I'm in the United Arab Emirates getting ready to give the keynote of my life in front of 5,000 people, 100 cameras broadcasting to 100 countries all over the world. And I'm saying, God, what is going on? Imposter syndrome is setting in. But I remember the moment when I was speaking in front of seven people and the message that came clear to me was obedience to the gift. You don't know what you're walking in. You don't know what you're walking. You don't know what you're laying down as a foundation for what's to come after. You don't know. You have no idea what you being obedient in your gift is connected to. When you begin to move in situations, circumstances and environments and you think it's just about you, you can only go so far. But it clicked to me that the moment that I was in a situation where I'm talking to the world, it was the same as when I was talking to seven people. Because the gift, the gift is the gift. I'm trying to talk to somebody, stay obedient in your journey. Stop looking to the left and to the right about what is coming to you. 
There is something so magical and so beautiful that happens when you begin to walk obediently in the gift that has been given to you. It's not just about satisfying your own needs. It becomes something where you know you're connected to something that is greater than you. You're connected. And so as you begin to walk obediently in the gift that you have, without you even thinking about it, you give other people the opportunity to do the same. There's a reminder, there's a flash in you just like there's a flash in me. I think about the educators who have literally given their time, their effort, and their heart to the students who are in their classroom. I'm not talking about just teaching. I'm talking about pouring their heart into those young people because something in them knows that as they plant that seed, that kid can then do what they are supposed to do for the next generation. It's connected. I had a teacher in second grade named Miss Brown. She loved on us in a way that was beyond a teacher to student. It was like a mother was in the classroom. I remember specifically she had an, uh, uh, an assignment that she gave us in second grade. She asked us to write a book as second graders. She said, use your imagination. We spent weeks on it. And I remember getting so involved and being so amazed by the opportunity to, to, to create my own world in a story. I would love to go back to her and say, hey, at the age of 26, I became a best-selling author. And I'm reminded of that moment. You planted a seed. You planted a seed when you told us, hey, a, your imagination with, with writing and with reading can take you anywhere. Miss Brown was obedient to her gift. When I was speaking to those seven people, I felt obedient to my gift. There are people right now who are walking in a journey and the message that I'm giving right now is to stay obedient to your gift. Do not wait for someone to, to, to for the applause. Do not wait for someone to, 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 to tell you you're doing the right thing. Do not wait for the reward to come your way. Do not wait for the result. Stay true to your process of staying obedient to the gift that has been given to you. Stay obedient to that. Day by day, stay obedient to that. I can't tell you what will come. I don't know what the result will be. But I do know that there is something beautiful and profound when an individual is able to find their gift and stay true to it, regardless of what the outside circumstances tell them. Stay true to it. I remember those moments and I track back my journey. I track back my journey and I think to myself like, What's the purpose, God? What is happening? When you say stay obedient to your gift, what is happening? There's a growth. There's a beautiful step-by-step -step process that happens when we stay obedient to our gift. It happens on the inside before it happens on the outside. When I got to see the picture, when I saw that woman holding my mom crying, it reminded me that anywhere that I go, my responsibility is to stay true to the gift God has given me. Period. So whatever right now is in you, whatever's on you, whatever keeps you up at night and wakes you up in the morning, whatever you know that when you do it, you feel a passion, you feel an inspiration. You remember the words of Howard Thurman when he says, do not ask what the world needs. Ask yourself what makes you come alive, because what the world needs is people who have come 
alive. It's simple yet profound. Do not wait for the people. Do not wait for the moment. Do not wait for the environment. Stay obedient to your gift and everything that you are looking for will be directly connected to you staying obedient to your gift. Inform the mind, inspire the heart. Stay obedient to your gift.